three. Okay. Dear students, today we are going to conduct one more experiment to find the effectiveness of a metallic fin. And what is a fin? A fin is an extended surface used for increasing the rate of heat transfer. We have taken in our experiment a pin fin. A circular cross section pin fin we have taken. And the theory regarding all these fin we have studied in the theory classes. And today we are going to conduct an experiment to find the effectiveness of a metallic fin. What is effectiveness of a metallic fin? It is nothing but heat transfer with fin divided by heat transfer without fin. It is the ratio of heat transfer with fin to heat transfer without fin. And after the derivations, after putting all the formula, finally we get the formula for finding out effectiveness is root of Pk divided by H into area of the fin into tan hyperbolic ML. How did I get this formula? You have learned it in the theory class. And how to conduct the experiment and find this E? It is an experiment having a lot of calculations which is explained on the board. I am going to explain it step by step how we are going to conduct the experiment. See now, as you know, effectiveness is equal to P, K by H, where P is a perimeter of the pin, pin fin and the diameter of the pin fin is given in the experiment and that using that phi D, we find out perimeter. And K is the thermal conductivity of the metal pin fin. Again, that is, we have taken aluminium pin and for that we have taken the K value as 200 watts per meter kilo. It's a fixed value for aluminium. And area of the fin again, the diameter is given by this by 4, area of the fin. So area of the fin, K and P are with us, except for H. Now what to find H? To find H, which is the convective heat transfer coefficient, we have got all these formula. And according to our correlation theories, the certain number is equal to H T L by K, which is all these formulas are available in the right hand book and they are studied in the theory also. And here, as you know, NU is equal to HL by K or H is equal to NU K by L. And NU, what is NU? The certain number, and you have to find that. K is the thermal conductivity of the air. The air which is taking the heat from the fin fin has also got thermal conductivity. Do not confuse this K with this K. This is the K of the metallic fin, whereas K is the thermal conductivity of the air surrounding it, which is carrying the heat away. And that, how to find that? That is given the red diamond book, you have to take it at the film temperature. Film temperature, what is film temperature again? The temperature of the pin fin plus the temperature of the surrounding air divided by 2. The average temperature of the fin as well as the surrounding air. And how to find that? What temperature of the pin fin? There's got, we have got thermal bubbles placed at different places, three places here T2, T3, T4. And that you have to take it from the experiment and put it here to find the T value, T wall. Once you got T wall as well as T infinity, the air, air temperature, you can find out the film temperature. Once you know the film temperature, you can find the K value from the date handle. At that temperature, the properties of air. From the properties of air table, K value we have to take. The same time, you can also be taking PR value there as I will explain it afterwards. And once you find out the K and TW here to find out H, L is equal to length of the fin. And to find NU, you know K and you know L. K, this one from the table, L given in the experiment. And to find out L, we got another correlation. This is the correlation for convective heat transfer over a cylindrical surface. This is available in the dead hand book again. And how did I get this formula? You learned it in the theory class. The set number is equal to C into Reynolds number to the power of M and Bronte number to the power of 0 0.33. And again here, what are these? C, R, E, and P, R. P, R, again, Bronte number, you have taken from the dead hand book table where you have taken the K value, the same place you find the K value also in the next column, and that is at the film temperature. The film temperature take PR from the dead hand. M and C are also is given along with this equation in the same column where that M and C value depends upon Reynolds number and quantum number. Reynolds number range and quantum number range for different ranges where they are given M and C values. This M and C values. You have to take it from the dead hand. 
And again, to find the Reynolds number, we have got another relation rho V dH bar mu for the flow inside the tank. What is rho? Density of air going to the duct, V, velocity of air, dH, effective diameter of the rectangular duct, and mu, the absolute viscosity of the air. And again, rho and mu are the properties we have taken from the dead diameter and the film temperature. Rho, mu, PR and K you will be taking from the dead angle at the film temperature. And again, dH, V I will tell you later, rho and mu are over dH is effective diameter. Since it is a rectangular duct we have got, we have to convert that into a circular duct. The effective diameter is 4 AD by 2 P. 4 AD, AD is area of the duct, the length into breadth, length into breadth is given here in the experiment and perimeter of the duct. Then dH you can find out. And again, mu and rho are velocity. How to find velocity of the air? Again, you have got another fluid dynamics formula QA by A. You must remember that Q is equal to B into A. Fluid dynamics formula or fluid mechanics formula Q is equal to B into A. And why B is equal to QA by A. How to find QA again? You have got another fluid mechanics formula. There is an orifice through which the air is flowing and then knowing the discharge goes to the charge. A naught, area of the orifice and root of 2G, H A, head of air. Head of air again, we calculate that, we got a um, water tube manometer there, then we take the head of water and once you take the head of water, density of water, density of air, we already know, we calculate the head of air. And A naught is the orifice area, which is given the gate, the diameter of the orifice is given there by D naught square by 4. Students, be careful. We are going to find out three areas here. Area of the orifice, A naught, for which we use the diameter of the orifice given in the specifications. And area of the duct, again, the rectangular duct, length and breadth are given. And again, area of the fin here. Where is that? Here. So do not get confused with all the three. That's why I put AF, AD, and A naught. You have to be very careful. So once you conduct the experiment, when conducting the experiment, only thing is to be switching off, supplying the heat electrically to the fin, 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 and we switch off the blower. The air is blown over the fin, the electrical heat heats the fin, fin, and the heat is transferred to the air going to the duct. And after some steady state achievement, after the steady state reached, only you have to take note down the temperatures and the head of water. Those are the only readings you take from the experiment. Other things are all calculations and data are taken from the data angle. So temperatures you note down, head of water you note down and substitute here and to find out the effectiveness. Head of water, finding head of water, you put it here. Density of water we know, 1000 kg per meter cube. Density of air we know. How much? 1.2 kg per meter cube. HA you can find out. And area of the diameter of the orifice is given. A0 is found out. And CD, we take it as 0 0.65, find out QA. Once you find out QA, area of the duct, you know, find out velocity. Once you find out velocity, put it here. DS, you can calculate it. Mu and rho are taken from the dead angle. RE is calculated. Once all RE is calculated, put it here. CN is taken from the dead angle. PR also taken from the dead angle. Nusselt number you find it. Once you find Nusselt number, you put it here and K taken from the dead angle, the length of the fin is given, H you can find it. Once you find the H, again put that H here, P perimeter of the fin, you know already, K again the thermo, what is called the thermo conductivity of the aluminium rod and area of the fin, I'll get that H you put, find out effectiveness. To find effectiveness, you have to go all the way through all these calculations. And finally, we can find the effectiveness of the metallic fin. Thank you. Let us go now to the experimental setup where we will explain how the arrangements are made and how to take the readings. Okay. Now, after learning how to conduct the experiment, let us actually conduct the experiment here. This is the setup we have got where we have got the control panel here. There is an voltmeter, ammeter to measure the supply of current to the heat point. There is a digital display thermometer where you can see the temperatures and the fin is placed here, the duct is there and you cannot see the fin from there. 
can you come here? The fin, the circular pin fin, what you have considered, is placed here inside. Can you see that? This is the fin. And there are thermal covers placed at this point, this point, and this point to measure the temperature at this point, this point, and this point. I told you T2, T3, T3, or T2, T3, T4, these are the places. And this is a duct, you can see. This is the duct through which the air is flowing. Once I switch on the blower there, the air starts flowing through the duct, and the same air is going out of the pipe through this orifice into the atmosphere. Right? Now, how to conduct the experiment? Before conducting the experiment, you have to switch on the power supply to the panel. Once you pop, the power supply is switched on, and you have to set the heater coil. You have to heat the pin fin at the base, the coil is fixed at the base, the heat is supplied to the fin from the base from the heater coil. You can adjust the power supply using this dimmer stand. And the temperatures at different points can be read through different channels here. Channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. Now since it is not heated, you are getting the same value, but once the heating starts, you will get the different temperatures at channel 3, channel 2, channel 1. And also, there will be channel 4 also, to measure the temperature of the atmosphere. That is the where, place where you read the temperatures, and then voltmeter, ammeter, if you want, you can take the reading, which will not be requiring it anyway. The blower is switched on here. This switch is the blower switch. You switch on the blower, just to make the air flow through the duct. Air is sucked by the blower, from through the duct the air flows and flows through the pipe. Here we have got a... If the blower is making too much of noise, I switch it off. Anyway, once you switch on the blower, the air starts flowing through the bag. And that the flow, measurement of air, has to be done using an orifice. If there is an orifice, it could be here. The air flows through the pipe and flows through that orifice to the atmosphere. And I fix the manometer, one or two manometers at the orifice to measure head of water. If you read the head of water at this manometer. It's a water tube manometer wherein you can see the pressure difference at the throat and at the pipe. And using that, HW, you can calculate HA there. And temperatures are right there. And once it is switched on, you have to wait for some time for the steady state to reach. Until that, you keep on checking the temperatures here. Temperature of channel 1, 2, 3, or 2, T2, T3, T4. Those readings should stabilize. For that, it will take some 20 to 30 minutes because whatever the heat supplied to the fin should be equal to the heat removed by the air. Then the steady state is achieved and those readings are taken for our calculation. And what are the readings we require there? The temperature readings of the fin and head of water. All other values we are going to take it from the data angle and the formulas are there. Right? This is the way to conduct the experiment to find the effectiveness of the mechanical way. Thank you.